afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I know a lot of faces in here from my time in NPS, but as uh, Jim stated, I am a Wednesday I'm an education administrator at the Department of General Programs, and I have this is Gina Rudolph here with me as well. She also works with the ACIP in our department. So the main purpose of today's meeting, as she said, is we're going to talk about some of the requirements and we're going to go live and look at uh, EPRU, Cognia, whatever you decide to call it. It used to be advanced ed, now it's Cognia. And we're going to look at my journey and look through the plans, answer any questions you might have, and have discussions. How are you coming along? Has everybody started? Or if you haven't started, will you be starting soon? Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, good. You want out? We're opting out. You're opting out. Okay. To get to um, the website, the platform, if you have not, I usually just Google Cognia My Journey. And then once I do that, it'll take me to a list, and it's usually the first one. And I'm clicking the wrong one, which would be this one. This is just a computer with a camera. All right, and so my journeys, and it'll take you to it. Please do not go down here to assist unless, is anybody over there? Do I need to be talking to the camera? Is everybody in here? Everybody in here. All right. This morning I had to talk to the camera because we had an overflow room. So I'm glad everybody's in one room today, right now. But do not go to assist unless you're going to get some old information that you put in already from the past. This will be archived eventually, so if there are some things you want to save, feel free to do so. But moving forward, your entire plan needs to go into my journey. So I've already logged in on another page. So let me go close this one out. Go over here. And this is what you will see when you log in. When you log in, you will get a dashboard for your school. So I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to make sure that you can before I um, keep going. Your dashboard will load. Mine looks a little different with bigger numbers because I have it for the entire state. You will have yours for your assigned school. EProof has several platforms in it. It has Elliot. Those are the observation tools, but that is not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about three in general, EProof surveys. So if you want to scroll down and see if you have access to that, it will tell you that you have access because it will say go to surveys. If it does not, it will say request access. Okay. okay. If we can, the sidebar conversation, if you have questions, please let me know. You got access, you can do it. Awesome, awesome. Hopefully, you picked up this sheet when you first signed in. If you not, if you did not, I can do it. You didn't? All right. I'm going to the first one. Right. Okay. okay. This is a cheat sheet. This cheat sheet tells you what your school are required to do as it relates to the ACIP. The ACIP has several components for Title I school. Your non Title I, I believe everybody here today is Title I, so you will have a different component that non Title I schools have. So, EProof surveys is one that you will use. And if you look on this list, it tells you exactly which surveys Title I schools are required to give. You know you have to utilize the Title I parent survey. That is a required survey from the State Department of Education to give the parents the Title I, they go to Title I students or Title I schools. Then you also have to give student and staff surveys. You can use last spring's data for this year's planning. You do not have to give those surveys this fall. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, newly entering a building, if I do not have the survey uh, or the threshold yet for the uh, percentage of all the surveys returned, should I continue surveying at this point? If you're at a point where you can and you've done everything to try to get your parents to complete your survey, you should be doing okay. You know, we can't. You keep sending home information, you can let parents know the computer lab is available if they need to do something. But we can't make them take the survey if you just want to try and feel, you know, you've exhausted all of your attempts and just go with it. Okay. So, Title I required parent survey, student survey, and staff. Again, you can use last year's survey data from this year's planning if you would like to, if you don't want to send it out in the fall. Or you can do it in the fall if you would like. But moving forward in the spring of 2020, you want to use this so you'll have your data back so when you plan for 2021. I'm going to show you what it looks like and where to find it. So we know surveys is the first thing that needs to be done. I keep going to this computer, but it's this. So once you click go to surveys, what I'm gonna do is pick a school because my screen will look a little bit different because I have all over the state. So let me go back. I see Carver in here, so I'm Carver. Why is it not taken? I know Carver has It's maybe GW. Okay. Well, since, but I just find something else. Since. I had to pick up Carver. I used to work there. One of the best experiences of my life. Ms. <laughs> Never had high school before, so it was very interesting. Let me see if another school in here. Where are you? McKee. All right, Walter T. McKee. Here we go. So we're going to pretend that this is my school, but I know it's not. You want to find where your surveys are. How do I get to my surveys? Well, what we have is a hamburger menu and a hot dog menu. That's what Cognia calls it. This is your hamburger. This is your hot dog. Sometimes they call it tater tots. You decide. So click on your hamburger menu. Scroll down to where it says content library. You will see two tabs. You want to give me time to Okay. All right. Once you pull this up, you will see advanced ed certified content that might one day turn to pop me, I'm not sure, and Alabama State Department of Education. Because we require the Title I parent survey at the ALSDE, that is where you will find that under the Alabama State Department of Education tab. So if you click it, it will take you to the two surveys that are currently available. As we have to add more, we will. But right now you will find the technology survey that your staff will complete in the spring normally and the Title I Parent Survey. The Title I Parent Survey is both in English and in Spanish. Those are the only two that we have right now. So when you get ready to distribute these surveys, I want Title I Parent One, Title I, I'm gonna click on the hot dog, and I'm gonna create it. Remind me to delete it because I'm creating for you today. All right. All right. It's going to pop up. You can rename it if you want to, or you can leave it just like it is. You want to make sure you select open survey, because if you don't open the survey, parents will not be able to. <laughs> and at any time when you are ready to close it, you can go in and close it by going down to the bottom and clicking close survey. So let's say you let your parents know you have three weeks to complete the survey. And then in three weeks you can go and you can just hit the close button. All right, now how do I get it to my parents? This is what the survey looks like. Now when you send it out to the parents, that is when they get the option of whether or not to check Spanish or English to see it. But this is how you get it to them. 
you click on where it says distribution and responses. And there is a link. So what you can do with that link is copy it and paste it, put it on your website, put it on a piece of paper, email it out, whatever you need to do to get it to your parents. Or you can copy and paste this link into a QR code generator like this. Here's one. I just go to open up a new window, go to Google, <coughs> QR code generator. And here's one, the first one that pops up. And then you would paste your link there. And there you go. There's your QR code. It generated it for you. Copy it, put it on a piece of paper, put it on your website, send it home. But before you do that, don't check to make sure the QR code works correctly. So all your parents have to do is hold their camera up to it on their phone, click it, and it'll take them to the survey. They choose English, Spanish, they take it, and they're done. It may be easier to do it that way, but you have several different options. You could do both options if you want. Okay. So here's my Title I required parent survey that all Title I schools must give out. And I'm going to hit the arrow to go back to the remaining surveys. I still want to go back to Content Library. Here's the Advanced Ed Certified tab one that's already clicked on. The only one required that you must use is the Title I parent one from us. The student and staff, you are required to do one, but you can choose from the Advanced Ed Certified content which one you would like for your students and staff to complete. There are several different ones. You can filter it out. So if I want to filter and I want staff surveys, here are all the options. You see all these? There's a whole lot to choose from. So you can read over them and see which one best fits. Oh, this is the data I want to collect from my school. And you would do it the same way. You would create it, get the link, email it out. When you download QR those, code. can you edit? Like, if you like everything except one, like, maybe one question, when you download it, can you edit it? Advanced that certified content, you cannot because it's their content. But what you can do is create your own and you may want to copy and paste it over and then add what you want to it. You could do that uh, some kind of way, but you'd have to type it in. Just in copy. Now, with the Title I Parent Survey, if you want additional parent information other than just what's on that survey, you can add more by copying and pasting it over or you can send another one home to go with it, but you have to use that one. So here are all the ones for staff. They have them all for culture and climate, to all types of things. And you will see inventories too. You can use either one, but I'll tell you the difference. A lot of people like the inventory better because the inventory gives you quantitative data. How many times a week do you do this? How many times? So that way you can get percentages from that instead of just an overall, do you feel like your school is locked, yes or no? So you decide which one you want to get. Then you can filter out to choose your student one. What I like about it, you see they have some geared straight towards high school and student engagement. How many times a week does your teacher talk to you about your grades? So you're getting some quantitative data, quantitative data there. They have middle school specific ones on student engagement. They have climate and culture ones even have some Catholic school stuff on here because it's for a lot of different, that's their content, advanced it. All right, middle school and high school. So you choose what you like. Elementary ones are on here. K-2 students, we do not recommend giving the surveys to because it may be a little bit difficult for them. The third grade on up, they should be able to take the student surveys with no problem. So again, what three surveys should you give to collect data from? And the whole point of collecting that data is because when you're doing your needs assessment, you're looking at the data to determine what, you know, how do my students feel? How do my teachers feel? How do my parents feel? What can we do to improve? That is the whole purpose of collecting that data. So that is the first one. The second one is the diagnostic. 
For Title I schools, there is a Title I specific diagnostic that you have to complete. And it is the school-wide diagnostic because all of the schools in Montgomery that receive Title I money are school-wide schools. If you were a targeted assisted school, then you would complete the TA. So what I need to do is one thing about EPRU, once you click something, it will open up in a totally different box. So I need to go to the previous EPRU My Journey window where I left off because we weren't surveying, so I'm going to click here. And I'm going to scroll. Remember to scroll because there's a lot of stuff on here. I have my Elliott data, survey data. <coughs> Keep going. Here I am. Diagnostics. So I'll click on diagnostics. Does everybody have access? If you don't, you're going to write your name down on a piece of paper because if you're in this meeting, I'm assuming you're going to be the ones that I see a couple of requests access. So you might want to write your name down and um, Jennifer will pick them up and get you added in. So, you will go to Diagnostics. And it's going to take a while. It's spinning. But what I need to do is go in as a school. So let me, let me cut that out. Because I want you to see what the school sees. Oh. It's going to take a second to load because it's loading statewide. Yours shouldn't take as long. I'm going to go in. This is state. I'm going to pick a district. So I'm on school. Garrett, you're sitting in here. I'm gonna pick Garrett. I don't want to say Garrett. You got strategy? If you don't have strategies, let Jennifer know too at the same time. Okay. So she can get it all in at once. Sorry for the delay. All right, so I'm going to pretend I'm um, Garrett is my school. She has no diagnostic created. I'm getting ready to create it for you. I can either delete it before I leave, or you already have it up there. It'll just have my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm on the, my diagnostics page. So if you're not there, go ahead and click on it if you have access to it and see has anybody already started your diagnostic. If they have not, it's fine. What you're going to do is, Go back up to the hamburger. Go down to content library. And it is going to bring up, just like the surveys, an Alabama State Department of Education tab and an Advanced Ed Certified Content tab. The Advanced Ed Certified Content tab is if you're going through accreditation. And that would be more so something the district will let you know that you need to do. But for Title I schools and the ACIP, you need to go to the ALSD When you click on it, you will see a list of all of the diagnostics that we have created at the department, ranging from charter school diagnostics to what you need, which is the school-wide Title I diagnostic. You can look for them all, it's not that many, or you can just filter by school because you want schools and this is what's popping up you have the tech plan then you have school-wide diagnostic or title one targeted assistance diagnostic which ones are you title one school-wide so you want to make sure you're clicking on the school-wide click on the hot dog and start it and it is going to open for you 
The name is going to automatically populate, but if you would like to change it, you are more than welcome to. It went from cold to hot, didn't it? Just that fast. <laughs> okay. So the first thing you need to do is open it because if you don't open it, you won't be able to type it. So there's an open diagnostic button. And at any time, you can open it and lock it, open it and lock it. You don't need any special permission. I'll tell you the reason for locking it is it takes a snapshot of where you left off. And if for whatever reason, if anything never happens and somebody had locked it and a snapshot was taken, you can contact us at the State Department. We can contact Cognia and they can get that, that information. But it will only occur if you click lock. If not, you can always leave it open. It really is... Not a big deal with diagnostics per se because I don't think anything major will happen at all. So just in case if you want to, you can. If you put something in assist last year, a lot of this information will look familiar. This is the diagnostic that was created straight from the EFA law, all 600 pages of it. And in order for you to receive your federal dollars, there are certain guidelines and things that you have to do. So this is where it's coming from. One time when I was in school, before I started in my position, I was like, this is just one more thing. What is the point? What is the purpose? I did not know. And I wish I would have known because then it would have made more sense. So if you didn't know, the whole purpose is if your school receives federal dollars, there are certain guidelines that you must have in place, certain things that you must have, and this helps to get that information. So section 1114B6 from ESSA, that is where it's coming from because it states you must have a comprehensive needs assessment. So what you will do, you've already had this in assisted. Like I said, it looks different. You will type in how was the comprehensive needs assessment conducted? It may be something as simple as the ACIP team met. We reviewed our survey data. We reviewed assessment data. We brought it back to the faculty and staff. We talked about it and we created our list of needs based on whatever data. You looked at maybe it was your graduation rate, maybe it was your attendance data, and that is what you would put. How did you conduct it? What were the results after you looked at your data? And you have a thirty-three, a thirty thousand character limit, so you can't go past that. What conclusions were drawn? So you're doing all of this, and everything that you're doing will guide you in creating your actual plan and improve strategies because you're looking at your needs. You're looking at what you want to focus on. What information did you gather from looking at your data? How were the school's goals connected? That's the big part because the goals in connecting it will be in strategy. You have a high EL population. You might want to have something that's focusing on your EL population. So you will type your information in here and then it'll go to the next step. This little black arrow, if you click on it, it will open up to kind of like a menu that you can click. Yes, you can go from different places. You don't have to do it all in order if you don't want to. But if you click on it, it'll take you to that section. That's the whole point of this part right here. So your school-wide reform strategies, because you are a school-wide school, what strategies are you doing to reform your school? Let's say you have an issue with climate and culture. Some of your school-wide uh, reform strategies may be to implement leader in me or whatever, something to that extent. So you would put that there. And it's talking about how you address students with disabilities. Again, the law is coming straight from the law. See those numbers? You'll type that information. I think this is fairly easy to do. This uh, my teacher turnover rate, if you have a high rate, what are you doing to help uh, recruit and retain? What about PD? What are you doing with PD? So you're going to type all this in. These are pretty much the same questions that you're used to seeing for those of you who've been doing it. One is NA for elementary schools because it deals specifically with high school with the career check program. And component three, evaluation. How are you going to evaluate if what you have going on at your school is working? How do you coordinate your resources? Then boom, ASIP assurances. I want to show you this one, tell you a little bit about this one. 
The law says with the ACIP, does one person develop your ACIP? No. no, you're supposed to do it as a team. And I've seen pictures on Facebook from y'all working together as your ACIP team at Carver High School. I remember working at Bellingrad and we sit down and we do these meetings with our ACIP teams. I've been at schools where we sat down and we looked at the data. That, that's how we know that you're having it as a team effort because you are going to upload your sign-in sheet. All right, you're going to set, select yes that we have developed our ASIP with our team, not just one person. So select yes and upload as an attachment signature pages, any notes or anything that would reflect the training that took place or the meetings that took place in the development phase. So you would click attachments, add attachment. If you have it in Google Docs, you can um, do the link, drag and drop or whatever, or you can just save it. I'm gonna have it saved, let's pretend it's on my desktop. So I'm gonna select file. I'm gonna go to my desktop. Here is uh, something I created, a sample. I would select it, I'm not gonna put it on there. I would select it. Enter my attachment name because it won't let you unless you put attachment name. I can just put something as simple as ACIP committee notes, but I have to name it or it won't take it in. And once you name it, well, let me see. Anyway, I select it. I'm going to hit next. You can. Put where it goes, coordination of resources, excuse me, ACIP assurances, but it's really just gonna drop it at the bottom. So save it and it's gonna drop. And it's with the school's ACIP was developed. That's the data for it. And now it's added as an attachment. I uploaded the wrong one by accident. I can hit the trash can and put the correct one up there. If I named it something that I don't like, such as test, I can hit the pencil and change it. So I've selected yes, that we work together as a team. The parent and family engagement piece, I'm gonna select yes, that we worked on that together, right? Yes. And I'm going to select yes, that we have our school compact and we revised it as needed. There are six sections on your school compact. So if you're still using the one with five, you got the wrong one, okay? So when we change from No Child Left Behind to ESSA, they add an additional one. So make sure you have the one with all six components. If you do not, Ms. Otola can show you exactly where it is to get. Now the parent and family engagement piece, this is your parent and family engagement plan that you send home to your parents for the ACIP. You do not have to send this exactly. You can, or you can kind of create a one pager and put it on a nice little, um, what you call those things you send home, newsletter or something, put it up on your website. But this is the parent and family engagement plan for your school. And it is very lengthy because with ESSA, they focus a lot on parent and family engagement. And it's the same from previous years. Parent and family engagement. Here's a new one. How many of you have done it before? Working in this, that it was your responsibility in the past. All right, this is new. Okay. On the comprehensive budget, it used to be you would type it right into the platform. Now it is on an Excel spreadsheet, and I kind of like it better, actually. But what you would do is you would click on it. It's going to ask you, have you completed and uploaded? You want to check yes. Because if you have not, that means you can't spend your money. So you want to check yes. It download it, and the spreadsheet is going to open up. This is where you are putting in what are your resources that you have? Because the purpose of Title I is to supplement what you are already given from the state, right? That is the whole purpose, to supplement. We are not supposed to run your whole program for you. So this helps us determine, are you supplementing the personnel you already have in your building? You earn state units. So you would put how many classroom teacher state units you earn, and I'm gonna show you where to find that information in just a minute. Then you're gonna put how many you actually place in your building. 
This is where a finding occurs when we come in to monitor you. Let's say as a school, I earned 1.5 librarian. High school, I earned 1.5 librarian. So I can have a librarian and half time librarian. All right. Let's say that instead of having that one half librarian, I'm going to put it in my building as a one half AP because we're working on climate and culture and I want an AP to help me assist with that. In my building, I can do that and still come back later and use Title I to hire an academic, what y'all call it now, accountability, interventionist, or Title I tutors or whatever, because I placed all of my state earned units in my building. Then it's okay to come back from Title I with your personnel and not get a finding or a citation. This is how you get a finding or a citation. That same 1.5 librarian, hmm, I'm going to keep my one librarian, but that 0.5, instead of using it in my building as a principal or a teacher or whatever, I'm going to give it to school B down the street because they need it more than we did. Right? I can let them have, I'm transferring my unit to them, and they take that unit. Then next week, I decide I want to hire an accountability interventions with my Title I money. That is a finding. It is a finding because you did not place all of your state-earned units before you came back and supplemented with Title I. Does that make sense? All right, so place all of yours first. That is the whole purpose of looking at this because when we come on we count the units. We say, oh, Carver's supposed to have this many, but they only have this or they only have, you can always have more, but you don't need to have less. Right. This is where you find this information if you have not gotten it yet. Usually you'll get it from maybe your CSFO or something, but if you have not gotten it, this is where you go to get it. Go to the ALSDE, the State Department website, Alabama State Department of Ed, .edu. You want to go to Data Center, because this is the data that you're looking for, and Foundation Reports. This lists all of your foundation reports across the state. You want the 2020 LEA unit breakdown. It's going to give you every school in the state. I can hit Control L to find month, where Montgomery starts. Type in Montgomery, put the top in this box. I've already done it from the previous session. Hit Enter and go until I find Montgomery. There we go, Montgomery County. And I'll find my school. So let's say I'm Brubaker Middle. At Brubaker Middle, we earn 37.24 teacher units, one principal, 0.5 assistant principal, a counselor, library media, and then that's pretty much it, your additional units. So in that building, they can have more than 37 teachers and come back with Title I, or they can have at least that minimum amount. If not, then that would be an issue. So that's how you find that information to complete the top part of that chart. Okay. Uh -huh. You say both data center data. Yes. We went to, once you log into the regular website, up at the top, data center, under school system funding reports, hit foundation reports, and you want 2020 unit breakdown by LEA. And you can scroll or search until you find your school system. Okay, so that's this part right here. Everybody got that? Okay, now you have to complete the actual spreadsheet itself where you are typing in your information. The blue boxes automatically populate for you. We have an example right here, and you see that this money has already populated. So what I'm going to do is right here it says provide a breakdown of how this money is used for your state and or local dollars. I'm going to delete this. We took it down to zero. We had the example in there. So let's say I want to think quickly what some of my state dollars are for. Because the whole purpose, again, of Title I is to do what? Supplement what the state gives you or any local. So let's just say I'm going to be very um, brief with this. I'm not going to take a lot of time with this one. So teachers, let's say with teachers, my amount, I'm making up something. I know it's going to be way more than that. But, okay. Uh, textbooks, because I know that's just one teacher and a half salary, so it's going to be in the millions probably. 
textbooks. Let's say I got 50,000. So, and you can add more lines if you need to by insert. So now that lets me know from state resources, my school got $125,000. Now where we start really looking is 11A, because that's when you really start talking about your Title I money. Does anybody want to talk about how much money their school got in Title I? Alone. Anybody? 244. 244. Thank you. All right. So, uh -huh. um, when you're at this uh, location, uh -huh. so when you're talking about the federal dollars, mm -hmm. and if we have your CSI plus your federal, they need to come back. I'm going to show you. It's the two different spots. I'm going to show you in just a second. You said 244000 so your 244 is go, it's going to have to add up to 244 when I'm done, right? And then when I look in your ACIP on the strategy side, whatever you're spending your money on, that 244 needs to somewhere be in that plan. Because if you've ever tried to purchase something and you've heard the whole program say, well, is it in your ACIP? That is why that question is being asked. So with that 244, what are some of the things you plan on utilizing? Sir, Mister, what school are you? I'm sorry. Car. Car. Okay, so at Car, like maybe personnel, technology, professional development. Yes. Anybody specific you hire from personnel, like a tutor or anything? Uh, yes. Okay, so let's say this is my school and this is what I'm going to budget. I know I want to hire or I will hire a Title One tutor, and that tutor. It's going to be part time, so it's 20,000, no commas, because if you put the commas, it won't take it. All right. And you see what it's doing? It's adding that up for you. Make sure you include your parent and family engagement allocation because MPS receives more than $500,000 in federal Title I. All schools are required to get um, a portion for parent and family engagement. I think MPS, $8 billion, $9 billion. Ms. how much does MPS get in Title I? Yeah, that's all over $15 million. $15 million, that's a lot of money, right? So out of that $15 million that MPS got, a portion per school was formerly that you have to use, you're going to get specifically to add to parent and family engagement. And you need to put that down here as well. So I'm going to have a tutor. I'm going to spend some money on some <clears throat> PD, and I'm going to be specific. I want to send my teachers to trainings on student engagement, PD. I don't have to tell you exactly where I'm going. I'm just kind of telling you what it is. And that PD is going to I'm going to designate five thousand for my teachers. I'm going to my technology lab needs some work, so I need some technology lab equipment. Fifteen thousand and. Um, Give me one more thing. What else? Usually personnel, equipment, PD. Anything else somebody can think of that they spend their money on? AI, academic accountability. What is it? Accountability intervention. All right. So I'm going to put accountability intervention. I'll write the whole thing out. And that salary for my accountability intervention is plus benefits is going to run me about $102,000. So I haven't even gotten to the 244. How much more money I still got left to spend? Right. Almost 100, more than $100,000. So I need to keep adding it until that number reaches what I was allocated, including my parent and family engagement. And I'm going to tell you why in just a second. Because I received parent and family engagement money, I'm going to have a parent resource room with equipment like computers and um, any other resources that they may need. And if I were an elementary school, you know how they send home the, the daily folders, the little communication folders? I can use my money for that because the whole purpose of your parent and family engagement money is what can you do to keep parents involved in their child's education? And sending home daily folders is one of them. All right, so let's say it took me $2,500. What I'm going to do is, not me per se, but whoever's monitoring you all as a district, when we come in, we mean the State Department of Education, 
And we come to your school. How many of you sat in when we came to interview y'all? And your CIP team was sitting in there. And we asked questions. Anybody have that opportunity? No. We'll come and we'll sit down and we'll talk to the ACE committee. That's usually the principal, the assistant principal, and designated teachers. And since you are here, it's going to be you too. All right. What we're going to do is look at this number, which in your case was $244,000. All of it should add up to $244,000. We're gonna look at your numbers there. We're gonna go look at the CSFO's report that was written and make sure that the CSFO has designated card and have $244,000 on his or her report, yes, I believe. Then we're gonna look at EGAP, which is our database that we use and see what Ms. Odatola gave you all parent and family engagement, which was $244,000. If there is a discrepancy anywhere, and it has happened, you were supposed to get $500,000, but guess what? You only got $244,000. EGAP said you were supposed to get $500,000, the CSFO's budget said. You see why, how, why we match all three? We want to make sure the school knows exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the schools want to make sure what well, we do that you know what you're doing because we've had some stories and I'll tell you one in particular pastor went and purchased pews just by one month for his church right and we found it out because we matched all that stuff together and we realized something's not right so pastor had to go take the pews out of the church and we had to put that money back into Taiwan it happened I took pews in the middle could have done that yeah <laughs> but it should add up so there's my title one. I'm going to keep going. Title two, let's just say a school gets 12,000 in title two money. I know I want to send some teachers to the mega conference. I'm going to send some teachers to what, the ASCD conference. Uh, name me something else y'all. SREB and AP training. All right. So. That is my PD. Let's say mega, I'm going to allocate $1,200 to send some teachers, uh, $1,500 to send somebody, SRPB, $200,000. <laughs> I'm just going to put two. And then AP. Uh, so I see this is how much I have allocated, and that should be what I receive from federal programs. Same thing if you receive Title III, I know all schools don't, but your Title III money is supplemental to your state ESL money that you receive if you get any. And that would be used for something like if you have a uh, after school tutoring program for your EL students or a summer school tutoring program for your EL students. So I'm going to put summer school and I'm including transportation in this as well to transport my students. So let's say I'm going to allocate 5000 for my program. And then I'm going to have a 12-week after-school program during the school year. After school. And that is going to be 5000 as well. So I know I had $10,000 in EL Title III money. Title III. I would do the same, Ms. Otola said, Title IV money is district level, and that can be, so you don't have to fool with 14 uh, A and B because that does not apply to you all at the school level. You can put NA if you would like, but it's zero. If you have a 21st century program, anybody in here have 21st century? Okay, so, so you would put that here, whatever that might be for personnel or transportation, you put that amount. You do not receive Title V. That would be for a rural area like Lowndes County. So you do not have to put anything there. Anybody, nobody from my government receives dependent care grant, so you don't have to put anything there. School improvement. This is where you ask the question about CSI. If you are a CSI school, this is where you will put that breakdown of information and it will add it in the box. So if I were a CSI, Comprehensive Support Instruction uh, School, or TS, we got a lot of ATSIs. Anybody ATSI that you know of? No? Across the state, we have a lot of ATSIs. Additional targeted support instruction. But if you are not CSI, do not worry about this because you will not receive that money. 
But let's say I did, I would list my personnel here. You got a question? I was asking, I heard you say CSI, so this is my original question. So this is section 1800. This is where it goes, 18A. So if I'm a CSI school, this is where I put that information and my total amount should equal here of how much I've received. And you can use that money specifically to whatever your issues were that made you a CSI school. Like if your issue was with you had a high EL population, then you what, what, what do you need to do with your high EL if they didn't score well? That CSI money needs to go towards giving them that intervention that they need. That will go there. But none of you all are that, so we will worry about that at this point. So do you see at the bottom, now it has totaled up, and that is not look correct, but it's supposed to total it up correct for you down here. <coughs> and it might be, maybe I didn't, I guess that is, no, because I had 175 right here. But this is the main one, especially, that we're gonna match up, but we're gonna look at the rest. And if it doesn't add up at the bottom, which this one apparently is not, it should have, but the rest of them did. So 10,000 for EL, 61 for Title II, Title I was 144, and then I just put my state resources there. I am going to save it when I'm done. Save as, save it to my desktop. Um, now what I need to do is go back to Eproof Diagnostics. Yes, I have completed it. Click attachments, and now I can add it. I'm going to add it as an attachment. I'm going to select the file, my coordination resources. I need to name it. Budget description is optional. I'm not going to type anything there. Next, and save. And there it is. It saved it for me. And then pencil to edit, trash can to erase. The final question is going to ask you, did you complete your ACIP strategies and EPROOF strategies, your EPROOF uh, platform? You need to select yes, even if you have it because you will. At some point, you need to have that done by November 1st at the latest. All right, you are done. That's a full <laughs> line diagnostic. You do not have to send it to Workspace. They give you two options right here, download reports into Workspace. You do not have to do that part. That is if you were going through monitoring and we would tell you on a different level, but you don't have to do that. Do you see the little check marks on the side? Every time you type in something or complete a section, it's gonna give you that check mark. So it'll let you know where you are in the process. And you can go back and look and see what you have done. And I have done most of them. I did the coordination resources and the assurances. Then I can click here in attachments anytime. It'll take me down to the bottom where all my attachments are. Your attachments are that all of them will be down at the bottom. So that was my diagnostic, and I'm completed that. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna delete this one. This one that's, that's the one I did right here. You're welcome. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna delete it. Make sure I'm deleting right now. Yes, I'm sure. So now yours that you've created is there. All right, that's diagnostics. Now what is the final one that you have to do? Strategy. Eproof strategies. That's the monster right now because it's a lot of work. But I'm telling you, once you get it done, then you are good to go for the next three to five years unless you need to make some changes to it. A lot of work in the beginning. I know because I sat down and I did one by myself to show you as an example. And it took some time. But I know now I'm good to go. So if I'm a principal, and I know lots of times we have turnover with principals, either they retire or they're moved to different schools or whatever. But if I have a good plan in place, and I truly want continuous improvement to take place, am I gonna change everything every year? No. So if I'm a principal and I retire, whoever comes in after me, they have this plan already together. Year two, year three, they can keep it moving and keep it going and hopefully you will see continuous improvement. But with strategies, all schools in the state, whether you're Title I or not, have to complete it. And it tells you what it looks like. And there are several different printouts. You got a strategy map, which I'm gonna show you, that will print out. You have an annual plan and then you have an annual implementation plan. 
Remember annual implementation plan. That is your actual ACIP that you will be using. Because in there, it's very specific with what are your priorities, what are you working on. If you're utilizing your Title I money, you'll have that in there as well, and you'll have who's responsible for it. So your annual implementation plan is the one you will use for your ACIP. So let me go to strategies. Remember, it opens up a new window, so I need to go back and find my main window. Strategies at the very bottom, so remember, scroll. Scroll, scroll. Here strategies. Hopefully you have access to it. Go to strategies. And I um, normally it will say for you in certain things. There's certain areas where you will see a save button, but in diagnostics, once you type in, it did say it, but in strategies, there is a save button. Unless you're uploading an attachment, you want to hit save. Okay, I'm trying to see the best way to do this. In the morning group, I showed them how to do it first. Then I came back and showed them mine, and it kind of connected. Do you want me to show you how to do it first, then show you mine, or show you mine first, and then show you how to do it? Or you don't care? So mine. All right. I'm going to show you mine, and then I'll show you how to do it. All right. And it took me a minute to get it done. But it's done. You will see all the ones that we've created. The Dean one is the one that I was playing with today when I showed the first group. So let me delete, delete this one. So I'm going to go down to ABC School. ABC School is one that I have done. And you will see the dates because you're planning for three to five years. So my plan, when I create a new plan and put in my date, I put 8-1-2019 all the way to 8-1-2024. I've created a five-year plan. So when I leave, my win post is clear now, so I can pass it on to the next person <laughs> and move on. Okay. This is a high school. I created it as if I were a high school. So I can open it up, and you will have four phases, envisioning, planning, implementation, and then your evaluation phase. If you noticed on my circle for ABC School, as I complete it, it fills up. I am almost done. I have not done the evaluation phase. That's why my circle is not complete for this year. So I'm gonna open it. I put in my vision, my mission, and my beliefs. There is a character limit, but I will tell you a workaround for that. If for whatever reason your vision, mission is limited or the character limits allow, you are able to download this as Word, and I'll show you that in a minute, and you can add to it and save it. Okay? It won't save on the platform, but it'll save on your Word document that you give out to your community stakeholders, your parents. Uh-huh. If you click what Oh, yeah, you can click that. It's a working document. You can always go back. The only thing that clicking the complete button does is make your circle work. <laughs> yeah, you can click complete. It just makes your circle grow. Now, Miss uh, Mrs. Officer has completed hers. I said I know she didn't want me to call her out, but she said she's working her. So if you have questions, then feel free at some point to just bring up her up. She will answer your questions, and then you can contact me. You <laughs> know. And you can contact me and I'll answer. All right, so here we go. Now, in your envisioning, pretty much everything in envisioning takes place offline. That's having discussion with your team, having discussions with your faculty, figuring out what you want to focus on. And some of y'all had your templates with you earlier with sheets of what you're going to focus on. So all you have to do is sit down and start typing it in. So you've already done that part, which is great. And that is where you see the little pieces of notebook paper. If you see the little icons of the notebook paper, that's where they're showing you that you've had discussions, you've taken notes, you've talked about things. That is offline. Online is where you actually type in your information and your circle grows. 
So after I had my pretend conversation, because this is my pretend plan with my faculty and staff, this is what we decided to focus on. What I'm focusing on are the accountability indicators for the state of Alabama. And I know y'all had discussions about that as the district and what you're gonna focus on. Yes, we have the same theme, but what I'm gonna do in my school as far as my priority statements and my activities will look different according to what I need at my school. So, my priorities that I'm gonna focus on in my statements, just a few words, over the next three to five years, I want to improve student growth over time. That's number one. I want to graduate all students, college and or career ready. Students will attend school regularly and arrive in a timely manner. And students will achieve proficiency levels. So those are the four priorities that I'm gonna work on over the next three to five years. I'm going to take those four priorities and shorten them into a strategic thing. So what's a key word that stood out? Student growth. So that is my strategic thing. Another one that stood up, stood out, I know I'm talking about graduating students. And they're going to be ready for college and career, so they're going to be what? Prepared graduates. Students will attend school regularly, in timely manner. What does that focus on? Student attendance. Students will achieve proficiency levels, basically student proficiency. And if you look at the report card, those are the same ones. Now, when I show you the plan, how I do it, you'll see that live in a minute. But at any time, if I don't like what I have, pencil to edit it, trash can to delete it. Now, this is where I check no. Now, if I take that and change it off, you see how that little circle part went away? That means I'm not ready to, to move on for my circle to complete. So at any time, I could change that. So I'm just going to click yes back. That's letting the computer know or the platform know that I've done the envisioning phase and I'm ready to move into the planning phase. So my circle is starting to fill up. So I got that. Now I want to hit next. Now I have to start my plan with exactly based on my things. What am I going to do? Yes, sir. Uh, so the synthesized results is just confirming that I completed and explored the future and determined my current reality. And I went in and typed in my vision, my mission, and my priority step. Right, priority yes. step. And then I click yes, and that's what made my circle go. go. Okay. And it's letting me know now that I'm ready to actually start my plan, where I'm putting my critical initiatives and all that other stuff. Yeah. Terminology has changed from ACIP. Some of it means the same thing that you see, but it just changed the terminology. Did anywhere in what you just saw say anything about I'm, my students will be proficient and go from 55 to 60 percent? Da, da, da. Did you see that? No. 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 So I'm just telling you overall what I'm going to focus on at that point. Now I'm going to add an objective. This is the place that if you so choose to put your percentages, you can put them down in that spot. Because I think the issue is, and what Kanye was saying, Kanye being advanced ed, that sometimes we just put those percentages there and we're so focused on just that percentage to say that, oh, check, we achieved it, that we're not thinking overall three to five years. So within your day, you can put that there, but it could be overall. Yes, because you're not going to see it for the most part in any of my five percentages. And you're not CSI, so nobody will. Some CSI schools may have to, but you don't. <laughs> All right, so based on that, I added my objectives. There was an add objective button. I'm not going to click on it because I don't need to add anymore right now. But when I show you how to do it, I will. But when I hit add objective, this popped up. And it's going to relate to one of my things, which in this case is student growth. So my objective needs to somewhere be related to what? Student growth. So my objective, remember I'm high school. I'm going to utilize assessment data and analysis of student growth to assess student learning and proficiency. So this is generic, it can fit anybody. So I'm gonna plan and implement. My critical initiative is the same thing that we call strategy in uh, assist. Your strategy and your critical initiative are the same thing, just different terminology. So now that I've added my objective, the next thing it's gonna ask for is a strategy. How am I going to get to what my objective is? If student proficiency is my objective, what initiatives am I going to put in place to get there? 
So I hit add critical initiative, a box pops up and I type in one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plan and implement high quality instruction. My teachers are going to do that. Another critical initiative is I'm going to utilize formative assessments and summative assessments to assess how my students are doing as far as it relates to proficiency. And I need to delete this one because this some kind of way got in there. So delete that. So how many critical initiatives do I have for that one thing? Two. Just two. You don't want to have too many because if you have too many, you may never get it all done. So I have two. You can, it's a, your journey though, that's why it's called my journey. You all can decide. But I say three to five overall strategic things in your critical initiatives. You can do how many you need, but I think there is a limit, but I don't remember what that number is. We caught in. All right, prepare graduates. My objective, students will graduate prepared for college and or career with their respective cohorts. That's my objective that I'm trying to maintain. How am I going to do it? What strategies? I'm going to hire a graduation coach and a career tech job coach to assist with preparing students for graduation beginning their ninth grade year. I see personnel here. How am I going to pay for that personnel? Title one money. And there's going to be a place to put it. So when somebody asks you, is it in your ASIP? Yes, it is. All right. So that's one thing I'm going to do. I'm also going to utilize early warning indicators for students who may be off track and provide additional tutoring and or resources for those students. Let's say I have a homeless student who's having difficulty getting to school. I'm going to provide the resources that they may need, transportation, whatever. Or if they're off track because they keep getting into trouble, I may provide some type of support to assist them with so whatever my early warning is. They need tutoring or whatever. It's there and I can use my Title I money for. There's something you don't see yet. This is generic, the critical initiative. I'm going to deep dive in a minute. I haven't gotten it. This is just overall because under critical initiatives, eventually I got to put my activities and I have to put my resources, my money. But I haven't gotten there yet. Student attendance is my other one. I'm going to improve student attendance in order to increase learning and student achievement because we know that goes hand in hand. You got to be at school in order to achieve, in order to learn. My initiatives, I'm going to implement a high quality attendance policy with outline procedures that dissuades absenteeism. That's probably not going to cost any money at all. Uh, but if it would, I could have it there for my Title I. I'm going to utilize the district level attendance officers to assist with chronic absenteeism. And then student proficiency. Finally, provide more active personalized learning opportunities that support learning proficiency. My initiatives, I'm going to implement instructional activities that promote student engagement. And I'm going to provide professional development to my teachers for personalized learning. So now that comes in, you're going to see in a minute, PD, money, it all ties together. Am I finished? Yes. If I click no, you see how the circle went away? Right here, but I click yes, now it's back, so it lets the platform know I'm ready to go to the next step. What is the next step? Identify outcomes and key measures. I've created my objectives, I've created my critical initiatives. Now I need to take that deep dive. This is the last step before I can start printing out. I need to identify what my outcomes are and my key measures. Now I'll put my money in in a minute, but this is the main meet up right here, this part, then the activities. Okay, hmm. questions before we Now, I need to add my outcomes. Now this is easy because my outcome is what do I want to take place? What do I want to happen? From planning, implementing high quality instruction, I want to increase student learning. How am I going to know that students are learning from that instruction that I spent my money on? What can I do? Classroom. Classroom observations. I can go in and just watch. I can use the Elliott tool if I would like to. I can use any other tool that I may have related to classroom observations. You can put other stuff there if you want to, but this is just one I put there to see if student learning is going on. My critical initiative utilized formative and summative assessments. My attended outcome is my students' levels are going to grow. 
how am I going to measure if their levels are growing? I'm going to have data meetings and I'm going to analyze results from assessments and we're going to plan accordingly. Prepared graduates. I hired my coach. Hopefully my intended outcome is my students are going to graduate with their cohort and they're going to be prepared when they graduate. How am I going to measure if that happened? My key measures will be I should see an increase in graduation rate. Maybe I'll even see some increase in dual enrollment to let me know, you know, college ready, maybe. And I may see an increase in industry recognized credentials for my career tech students when they graduate and they can go on into the field and serve. Those are my measures that I'm going to use to see if I indeed did this over the next three to five years. My uh, critical initiative utilizing the warning indicators to provide tutoring for students who might be off track. Hopefully what will occur is those students will improve academically if they were struggling. My key measure, how am I going to know if they improved? I need to look at their what? Grades, their report card grades. I look at more than that if I want to, but that's just something I put there. All right, attendance. I implemented a policy that's hopefully going to dissuade absenteeism. My intended outcome, students' attendance will improve, and I will my measure to see if my policy was high quality and it's working. What do I need to do to it? Evaluate my policy. And if it's not working, I need to revise it. Or whatever you see in that case. You put what you want, because this is just a generic plan. Uh, district level officers with chronic absenteeism, they're going to assist. Hopefully my outcome again, same thing, student attendance will improve and I'm going to know that because their attendance reports will show that they are coming to school. Finally, proficiency levels, uh, implementing instructional activities that promote engagement. <clears throat> my outcome, students will be more engaged. I will know it because I'm doing the Elliott observations which look specifically at student engagement. And I will know it because I'm going to give my students the inventory. It's an engagement inventory that I can give to my students and they can check whether or not if they feel like their teachers are engaging them in their learning. And PD, I didn't create one here, but I would add intended outcome. I'm going to provide PD and hopefully through that, if I cl uh, click the outcome, I will see that my teachers will be utilizing or doing whatever it is that the PD taught them to do, the training them to do. And my key measure might be looking at the teacher inventories, how they felt about the PD that they attended, and other things as well. So I click yes, and then my circle fill in, and next. Now I want to view my strategy map. This is the lovely map that you can send home to stakeholders. This is what it looks like on the platform. You can download it. And when you download it, you click strategy map and you have the option of PDF or Word. I like Word because I can play with it in Word and download. When you download it, it will go to who is ever logged in and via email. All right, so your email address needs to be in there. It won't pop up. It's the only thing I don't like. If it does not pop up, it will send a link to your email, and you have 90 days to use that link. But once you download it, save it to your desktop, and you're done. I already have one downloaded down here. Let me see if this is a little This is what it looks like if you download it in Word. And you can play with it. Make it longer. This is where if the mission wasn't long enough, you can go in and add to it. But remember, it won't transfer over in the platform. You can just do it here. You can change the colors of these if you would like to. Change the way your school name looks and make it all pretty. And Dr. Harrison said one school, they put their school's watermark behind it and saved it. And so it was really personalized. And you can print it and you can give it out to your stakeholders. This is what you're going to focus on over the next three to five years overall. Fairly simple, right? It's one page. That's the good part about it. It all fit on one page. But sometimes if you may have a second page, but if you move it up in Word, you can do that. PDF, you can't. Right, questions about the strategy map? Going back to here are my other printouts. Which one did I say was your plan between these two? The annual implementation plan. This pretty much has the same thing as this one, except you don't have your financial resources. 
Theory of action, that is your evaluation. Did it work? Everything that you said you were going to do that year, did it work? So I've developed my strategy map. Here it is. And go back to planning. Yes, I'm complete. Did you see my circle went away? And next. All right, here's the meat of it. This is the key part. Your dates. It's your journey. You determine after talking to your ACIP team and your faculty, your staff, what are you going to focus on this year? I had a lot of stuff on that strategy map. Some people have a whole lot more. I'm not going to focus on all of it this year. So I'm going to put my dates in of when I'm going to focus on. Some I might focus on everything all four to five years. That uh, graduation coach, career tech coach, if they're ninth grade. I need to focus on that all four to five years to make sure they stay with their cohort. Others I may not. So my plan and implement high quality instruction, we're going to start on it this year. My formative assessments, I'm going to really focus on high quality instruction and training my teachers this year. And then next year, I'm going to start utilizing formative assessments to make sure they truly understand and start looking at it. You decide your dates. So those were the ones I had for that one. Prepared graduates, all five years, my, we're going to work on this one. We're going to have this going all five years. Same thing for my early warning indicators, because I want to make sure my students graduate ready. Student attendance, I want them there. But let's say this year I'm developing, I could put any day, but let's say this year I was developing my policy, really, truly. And then I'm going to implement it, and I'm going to use my resource officers or whatever. You put your dates in. Proficiency. This year, I'm going to really focus on providing that PD, and then we're going to continue to work on uh, promoting student engagement, et cetera. And then you would click yes if you're done, so the circle will fill in, and you hit next. Any questions about that? It's after lunch. Y'all like, no, just get down. All right. Now, I want to pull... Only what I put based on my dates that I'm going to focus on for the 1920 school year. So, August 1st, some of y'all may not started until November 1st, but I've already done mine. So, and I'm going to go all the way to hey, Miss Johnson. I'm going to go all the way to the end of May. And I want to view what I have. This is when I start going more in depth. I have to add my activities, my financial resources, my weekly activity under student growth. I'm going to have common planning time with my teachers. They're going to meet at least, um, we want them to meet weekly, but my benchmark is for them to meet three to four times a month. How am I going to measure it? Meeting notes, agendas, and lesson plans. Did it require any money? No. But if you use subs or something, then you're going to want to put it in your plan and put the money there. My tech coach and my career job graduation coach, whatever, I added my activity. Who is going to be responsible? My, my grad coach is responsible. How much does he cost or she cost? Right here. 40000 so I know $40,000 of my Title I money is there. This is how I'm going to measure if my grad coach is doing what he or she is supposed to do to assist students based on my objectives. They're going to meet quarterly with students. They're going to review their students' personalized learning plans to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do, provide feedback, and provide interventions as needed. And the first time I'm going to check to see if my graduation coach is doing it, because I started in, October, in August is when? October 1. You can put your benchmarks there. So October 1, I know on my plan, my grad coach knows I'm coming to meet with you. Have your stuff ready. We're going to sit down. Who are my targeted students? Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. <laughs> I knew some of y'all would get that. <laughs> they're my targeted students. Let me see their plans. Let me see how they're doing. Have they been absent? Are they coming to school? So that's what you do there. All right, attendance, 
Same thing. Uh, using a district resource officer, they're free. The district pays for that at the district level, so that's not coming out of my school money. When I say they're free, they're free for you at the school, not at the district level. All right, those targeted students are reviewing information. At least I think they're free for y'all. Um, and my benchmark is to make sure by September, I started in, in August, by September, my first target. Hopefully they finish school and they don't have any more than two absences. If they do, then that's my early morning sign to say we need to start you on a plan or whatever we need to do. All right, proficiency, the same thing. My teachers over here, we want to purchase some new materials that have been evidence-based to show that my students are going to achieve. I'm trying to think, what was that, Jennifer, when we were at Billingraph that we used? It was that math program and that language program. No, there's a reason why they use it. Language exclamation. What? Okay, let's say it was language exclamation that we're using. And those materials and resources cost me $45,000. What should I see with that $45,000 if I walk into that classroom? They need to be utilizing those resources. And my measure will be making sure that they are utilizing those materials and supplies and that students are engaged. And I can check that. I know by September 23rd, I'm gonna go into that class and I'm gonna do an Elliott observation, which tells me that my students are being engaged and show increased learning. So this requires a lot for, and I know as principals, I have never been a principal, I've been an assistant principal, but I've seen you all working all the time. It's a lot to run school. And I know you're supposed to run school and be the instructional leader, all of that at the same time. But then you have people to assist you, like your accountability interventionist and all of those other resources. That is where you all have to work together to make sure that if you put in your plan, those things are being done. Because if you want it to work, you, you got to monitor what you're doing and what's in the plan. If not, it won't work. All right. Uh, PD. We're spending $20,000 on PD. I'm going to have a consultant to come in to provide PD. And if I did, I might send my teacher somewhere. And my faculty and staff need to be actively participating and not playing with their phones or asleep or whatever. So those are my benchmarks to check. All right. Yes, it's complete. Then next. Now I'm ready to pull. And I pray that this is the part because, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm still learning this too. From that, I'm ready to pull my plan for 2019-2020 for everything that I put. And I want to download it. August 1. May 29th. You. I want to find the download. But oh. Here we go. Here it is. I want to download it. That's what I'm trying to do. My output. Up at the top. Annual implementation plan. See? Download. Alright. It's going to download it in PDF or Word. And it already exists because I have it down at the bottom, but it will send it to your email and you would pull it up. Make sure I got the right one pulled up. So everything from this date, August 1st, 2019 to 2020, that we're going to focus on at a school is going to print off in how many pages do you see at the bottom? One, two, three, four, five, six. So my plan is not 523 pages long. If I've seen some in the past, it is only six pages. Is that reasonable? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to print off my six pages or I'm going to send it out via email and my teachers can download it to their computers or however you want to do it. And this is what we know. This is what we're focusing on for 2019-2020. Then next year, or at the end of the year, I'll do my evaluation piece. The next year, all I got to do is just put my dates in and it's going to print out what I'm focusing on next year. This year, a lot of work. Next year, not as much work. But one thing I do want you to remember, what can you do? It's a working document. You can always change it. So I'm not going to say once you do it this year, you're done. You might have to make some changes. But a lot of the work will take place this year. All right. 
And I think in showing you that, let me show you how to create your plan. If you have not already. Anybody have even, have, have, does everybody have their plan started? Okay, if not, I'm gonna show you how to start. All right. You will have your school. This is everybody. These are all the people that stayed with play. Once you go to strategies, you will see new plan at the top. You will click on new plan. It will ask you to name it. Um, I do like I did earlier. Dean Academy is the name of my school. My start date will be three to five years. And my end date. And this is going to take me all the way to 05, 31, 2024. One year left for time. <laughs> Save. And there it is, Dean Academy. Click on the. Now, one thing I want to say, you're not going to do this every year. It's done already. So next year, don't come creating a new plan, OK? Don't create a new plan next year. Your plan is already done, Dean Academy. The only thing you're going to do is select your what? Let me go back down to this one. All right. ABC School's plan is done for the next five years. I'm not going to create a new plan next year. I'm just going to select the dates I want and pull it. All right. Under implementation, annual implementation is where I'm going to go next fall. And just put my dates in, and it's gonna print. Yes. But you have to change the budget sheet. You. That's the one thing you do change, but that's not as difficult. The, the diagnostic, because you may get more money next year. You may get less money next year. You have to change that budget. But if you don't have any major changes on the other parts, you can just. It's a spreadsheet that's already been saved. You don't have to do anything to it other than change the budget, unless you want to make some changes to that. All right, so did everybody hear that question? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to go to Dean Academy. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to type in my vision and mission. I'm not going to do it all. Test. I didn't spell that right. <coughs> Remember, if it doesn't fit here, where do I go? Word. 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 Download it in Word. All right, my priority statements, I'm gonna add new. I'm gonna type it in, my priority student growth. Thank you, growth, growth. I'm going to, my, my excuse me, my statement needs to be several words. I'm going to increase student growth. I'm going to take that and make a thing from it, which will just be student growth. I have to select the tag. Is there a required tag? No, you just choose the one that makes most sense. This is an advanced ed feature if you're going through accreditation because the district has to do a district plan and they have to utilize these tags. So let's say student growth, uh, impact on instruction. And I'm gonna say, boom, there it is. And I will do the same for my next three things that I'm adding to it. I don't like it, pencil or trash can. So let's now pretend that I have added all four. Am I done? Yes. My circle filled up because I've already had this discussion. We've already talked about that part. Next, this is going to always pop up again and tell you about printing it out. I need to add my objective to go with the thing. My drop box is going to come down. And all four that I had up there will pop up, but I only type in student growth. So my objective is, this is where if you want to put percentages, you can, but you don't have to. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you as an example. There, the, if I did put percentages, a 10% growth and student whatever on the next slide. Or I could have put, there will be growth in my students over time. I can be as this, your journey. All right, you put percentages if you want to. All right, tag. And that's going to impact on instruction. Say, have my objective. What's the next step? You have your objective, now you gotta put in your initiatives. My strategies, it used to be called. 
And one of them, when you click Add Critical Initiative uh, for Student Growth, what was something I had? Something about materials. I'm just typing test so you can see. All right, test. I'm going to put it in because I showed you mine first so you know what it should look like. Select my tag, and it may be different depending on what you type down. Type on. All right, and there he is. That was for the very first one. I only did one, but it would have all of them listed if I typed in four. But I didn't. I only typed in three. Any questions so far? Go back to that priority state, add priority statement. Yes, right here. It's student growth on here. I'm just, right. I'm just showing you an example. But you you can have, we don't recommend that it may not be. I don't work. Cognizant is three to five. And that's what we suggest because we've seen them before, like I said, with 10, and that was just three to five. That was a lot. All right. So three to five is the recommended amount of priority statements that you're going to focus on over the next few years. I've done my initiatives. Here's my theme. Here's my objective, my initiative. Your critical initiative, there is a maximum number that the computer will let you put in, but I don't know what that is. But I would say three to five critical initiatives, maybe, but I don't really, there may be more than that. Maybe it's eight, but you don't want to have two too many. All right. So, yes, I've completed it. Next, now what it's going to ask me for, intended outcome. So if my objective was student growth, what is my intended outcome? My students will what? Increasing. Students' proficiency or growth or whatever. Student growth will improve and not decline. All right. So it matches. Don't like it, I can trash it. Save, boom, there it is. How am I gonna know? Now I need to add my key measures. How am I gonna know it, that growth is going on? What am I gonna look at? Student assessment data. And that is, assessment data could be state tests, it could be progress reports, report cards. Whatever. All right, save. So now I have what is this one called? The priority, the, the what? Thanks. My priority theme, my strategic theme. When my strategic themes comes from my priority state. So I have my strategic theme, I have my objectives, my critical initiatives, my intended outcomes, my key measures. No, I'm not done. I'm, I'm done with this part, but I'm not done. I have to add the rest if I had more. So now it's going to take me to my strategy map if I wanted to look at it, but I don't want to. Now I need to be more specific and put in my dates for what I want to pull my plan for. So I put in my dates. It could be all three to five years. It might be this year. It might be next year. You decide. This year only, I'm going to focus on critical initiative tests because that's what I named it. All right. Or I'm going to focus on it all five. It's up to you. All right. Yes, I'm complete because I'm going to do it for all of them that I have. Next, it's giving me my little output. This year. Now I'm going to be more specific and add my activity. Am I going to fail? Y'all got it? All right, add my activity, my tag. My person responsible, these two are the ones that's important for federal programs. Put who's going to do it, maybe staff, it might be a specific person, and I'm going to put my financial resources, especially if it's Title I related. My launch date, when I'm going to start it, what my measure was, and that's why I had meeting notes, what I'm going to review, and my target date, when's the first time I'm going to look at it to make sure it's being done, and what is it that I'm looking at. I'm uh, not saving it because you saw me do it. Next. And then once you do it for all, you are ready to print your plan. 
The theory of action is what you will do to evaluate your plan after having discussions. You see a lot of it takes place offline. Again, when you're ready to print, output, strategy map is the big pretty map for three to five years. Annual improvement plan has just about everything that the annual implementation plan has, except for the money and the people responsible. Then this is your evaluation piece. All right, it is 2.05. I'm going to stop there because I think you got it, but if you don't, now it's time to ask questions. Now it's time if you've been working on it already and you are stuck with something. Some of you I'm looking at with the keys. And they already have their stuff in. So that's good as far as your priority settings that I can see. So I don't know how far you have left to go. I can look at your circle and see. So now she's getting ready to go to the plan side. The planning part. And she started. And she started. All right. So you have a lot. If you are the person responsible for leading it, you know, you're going to take this back to your school to talk about it. Uh, I'm glad to see some principals in here because the principals, they are the construction leader. But if you are not the principal, please make sure you go back in share with your principal so they are aware of what the expectations are make copies of that um so they are aware and that they know any questions about this and if you want to work on it a little bit before heading back to where it is you need to go i'm here and i will answer your questions or show you some information if you don't know it um and if not then i'm pretty much done anybody want to say anything from felt programs that needs to be said. Um, we just need to make sure that that you approve your plan by November the first. So if you need some extra support, just remember you do have people at central office that can assist you with that. Okay. Okay. What we will do is we'll just email out the list so you 